front, um, best place to start, the grill. Um, we are really, we have a phrase internally which is romantic but never retro. And what that really means is we went and looked at the great cars we've done in the past, DB24, DB5, and we really looked at, we call this the S-curve or moustache line. And if you go back in the old days, this was very, very strong, really, really strong. And those features used to make the body. And we sort of felt like that had been lost in a lot of modern car design. And we wanted the grill to really form the shapes around it. So you can see how sculpted we are all the way around the car. The grill floats. There is a lower aperture, but you don't really read it. You only read the upper aperture. So all those forms flow straight down the car and into this big clamshell. The clamshell was uh, a real moment in the project. It was uh, it enabled a lot of things in terms of pedestrian impact, but also design. And uh, for Aston Martin Design, we want to make cars that are closer to art as we can in an industrial context. If you see this car next to a DB9, it has the sort of same effect of when you saw a DB9 part the first time next to a DB7. It's that step change, very progressive in its language. On the side of the car, then um, the car has very, very integrated aerodynamics uh, on it. It's not a case of sticky plasters like we'd see, say, five, 10 years ago. It's a full system. So starting with the side straight, which is very much reimagined for this car, it was sort of inspired by what we did for CC100. So the side straight's actually meeting the wheel arts. And the reason why it's doing that is we're actually venting air off the top of the, uh, off the, top of the arts, pressure off there. So that increases downforce at the front, reduces drag. Underneath here, you actually have a series of ribs of small features under there. And what's that all doing is, is spiraling the air down the side of the car, scrolls the air down the side of the car, and it pulls air off the bonnet, down the side, and under the wing mirror. That reduces drag, it reduces wind noise, and it's all leading to the system, the aero system at the back of the car. This was inspired by F-duct in Formula One, which is in, itself inspired by 1950s biplanes, blown wings. So the air comes through here, through a tunnel, and creates a blade of air at the back of the car. Now that, the real reason of doing that is we wanted this super clean silhouette on the back. Again, go back to the GT cars, the greats of 50s, 40s, 70s. They had these really, really clean lines. The reason why that's changed is aerodynamics, high speed requirements. And we wanted to find a solution to that that was unique, innovative. And we actually have two patents on this system. Um, it produces lots and lots of high speed stability and it does that with almost no drag penalty whatsoever. So very, very clever system, hence the, hence the patent. In terms of overall proportion of the car, we've tried to, with DB9, we have a wonderful starting point, but we've tried to amplify wherever possible. So the front wheel versus DB9 is now 65 millimeters further forward, meaning we can get the A-pillar shooting straight through the center of the front wheel. Overhangs, front overhangs slightly shorter, rear overhangs about the same. The overall dimensions of the car are very, very similar to today. We have some very much more crisper lines on the car. We call them very consequential. So everything here, so this line, this line refers to the aero beneath it, the width of the tire beneath that. So they are stronger, more assertive lines, but very consequential in nature. We have more sculpting down the body side, more cigar as we call it through the here, and more bottle through the length of the car. We actually call this the roof strake. So we have side strakes on our car, bonnet strakes, and now we have roof strakes. Um, the thinking behind this was, again, this marks the chains. It's a very progressive uh, feature for Aston Martin. We have a wonderful 103 year history, but we shouldn't let that hold us back and move forward. So you can either do it in black, as you see here, with a black roof, which separates the upper body to the lower body, or with the car we have over here, we have a bright, aluminium anodized uh, roof, roof strake. So here you highlight the cabin, here you separate the cabin, and you can also do it in body color, and by doing that you join up. So a very diverse range of the way you can spec the character of the car. You'll see some elements in here from CC100, DBX, and Vulcan. Those cars in many ways were test beds for our future design language. They were our little movie trailers, but like all good movie trailers, they don't give the final story away, which is this car right now. So elements like this with the with the uh, the straight running straight off the wheel, you get all this power grip around the wheel and you'll notice the wheel, the the lines actually point forward. So everything's gripping around the front tire. So this was from CC100. 
These elements were developed from GP100, the car we did for Gran Turismo, uh, DBX also featured this thing, and as I said, this was something that we were developing and testing as we went along. On the rear of the car, we also have what we uh, internally call the, the discus section through here, and you saw this very much on, in a very exaggerated form on Vulcan. So you have a discus section through the Y0 and this very clean line all the way through to the lamps at the edges. You can see the grill is set back slightly than before. This point is very far leading forward and this is all tucked under, giving this very, very sharp nose appearance. It's something that you sort of saw back in older Astons, older cars, and it's very, very hard to achieve now. This was a big hand-in-hand -hand operation with engineering to make sure that we could do this and pass all our crash regs.